Hey everyone, I'm Matt with Ozark Overland Adventures. And in this video, we're gonna discuss really what I think are the top 10 things that on your overlanding adventures to never leave home without. Now, I, I think the obvious things that you know are not gonna be part of this video, food, shelter, water. Those are the absolute bare necessities. You know, if you're going out for multiple days, obviously you gotta have food, you gotta have water, and you need a place to sleep. For some people, that's just a sleeping bag, you know, under the stars, like the good, you know, like the cowboy days. Um, for others, it's rooftop tent, ground tent, hammock, whatever. So food, shelter, water, obviously you gotta have those. Uh, you know, how you, how you do that is completely up to you. Um, not, not covering that in this video. That's, that's been done before, but in this video, this is the stuff you need to take with you to make sure you get home. First on this list is recovery gear. I just released an entire video going through in detail the recovery gear that you need, um, the fact that it needs to be stored in some place that's easily accessible. Uh, so I'm not gonna rehash that here. I'll put the link uh, right up here. And go, go, after you watch this video, go check that out if you haven't seen it yet. Uh, because recovery gear is a must. Uh, whether you're traveling solo, whether you're traveling with a group, um, you, you got to have that on, on any overlanding trip. Up next, and these are in no particular order, is tools. It is a matter of when, not if, you're going to have an issue out on the trail and you need to be able to fix it. Otherwise, it's going to be one really expensive tow bill. So, in, in these two bags, I carry just about every tool that I have ever used on my Jeep. Um, I keep most of my you know, main stuff here in the Step 22 bag. This is a fantastic tool roll. Uh, but everything I have ever used, from a hammer, all of my wrenches in this wrench roll, all the sizes that I've ever used uh, go in there other things in these little pouches, uh, wrenches, various sizes and, and styles, um, files, wire brushes for, for cleaning things out, um, Allen key screwdrivers, pair of scissors, all that stuff is in here. Big C-clamp, those come in real handy. Of course, a hammer. So all that's in here. And this tool bag here is all of my sockets. This is where all my sockets live. Um, everyone I've ever had from you know, little uh, 10 millimeters, multiple of those because you know how those disappear, torque wrench, um, all the way up to the big old socket for your axle nut um, and everything in between. So all, all of my sockets live in this bag. And just because you know when things happen on the trail, you want to try to get it done quickly. I also carry a cordless impact. Uh, I actually had a flat tire on my last trip out in the Ozarks with my buddies. And we were able to, you know, rally together, got the tire off, changed out uh, super fast. Uh, we did have an issue with, uh, with something, and I'll get into that next. Now, the tools that you take with you, um, that, that's going to be vehicle dependent. And it's also going to be knowledge dependent. There's, there's no need for you carrying, you know, 100 pounds worth of tools if you've never wrenched on your rig before. So that is one of the reasons why I highly recommend anything that you can do on your vehicle yourself. Lift kit, brakes, drive shafts, steering components, um, you know, lighting, Anything that you can try to do yourself so that you have that experience and that knowledge so that when something fails on the trail, uh, that will come in really handy. Uh, ball joints, wheel hubs, gosh, uh, the control arms, I mean, all that stuff. Shocks can, yeah, if you have experience working on those and installing those yourself, if you have a wheel hub failure, which we've had before, if you have brake failure, which we've had before, uh, if you have ball joint failure, uh, steering failure, all that sort of stuff, you're equipped. You, you've got the tools because you've done it before. You've got the knowledge to get it done on the trail. So do that yourself. 
Up next is a good jack. Now, you know, depending on how high your vehicle is lifted, how big of a tire you've got on there, your, uh, you know, your basic scissor jack that came with your vehicle may suffice. My recommendation to you, test it at home before you have to use it on the trail. We uh, were just on this last trip. I had a flat tire. The only jack I had with me was my scissor jack. Now, I had tested it at home and knew just barely this would, if I lifted it from the lowest part of the axle, I could change a tire on pavement. Uh, but we were on trail, we were on an incline, and my tire just, it, it, the way the terrain was, um, I, this wasn't going to work. This wasn't going to get it. Um, my dear friend Robert, he has the fancy, super nice ARB pneumatic, kind of like a high lift, but ARB's, ARB's version, um, and it's pneumatic and everything. Super awesome jack. It worked but it was actually broken. Uh, some parts to the handle had broken off. We managed to get that in there just so he could do it. And then the lever to release it was completely broken off and there was no way for us to do it. I had to back off of it. Um, it, it wasn't very good. But my friend Paul, so we, we got it lifted up, but a high lift jack, you're gonna be lifting from the bumper. Well, I've got a three and a half inch lift with a lot of flex. You know what happens when you start lifting up your vehicle from the bumper and you've got a lot of flex? Your tire stays on the ground. So we, we used that jack to secure it and tried to use this jack on the axle. Wasn't working. So um, luckily my friend Paul, he actually had just purchased um, a, a bottle jack. And I, as soon as I got home, ran, this is from Harbor Freight, nothing fancy, like 40 bucks, um, went and now I have my own bottle jack. These things don't take up a lot of space. They have extensions like this. And with his bottle jack in the right spot, we were able to lift the tire up off the ground enough to change the tire and get on our way. So if, if Paul hadn't brought his bottle jack, we, we would have been in a pickle. Now, some other options, um, accessories for your jacks. Um, this is a little, I guess that's a, about an inch and a half uh, base plate that you can put on your jack. Had I had this with this jack, that uh, probably would have would have done enough for me. Um, they, these come in all different sizes. This is just a small one that came in some kit that we got. Um, I don't remember what. Um, ARB, a couple of brands make some like three and a half inch tall ones. We actually had one of those, but the terrain wasn't, wasn't very good. Um, I found this, this is like a monster. I, I found this on Amazon. Uh, this thing's multi-purpose. You can use it for like a trailer jack. Um, I mean, gosh, if I wanted to, I could drive up on this thing as a leveling block for my Jeep. Uh, I, I, it's all made of plastic, but it's, it's got some heft to it. I don't know if they put metal in there or something. But what, it's, it's a lot heavier than I expected it to be. But this obviously is a very firm, very large uh, plate that you can use to extend your jack. I'm not sure where this is gonna go in my setup, but this thing's gonna go with me along with this from now on. So uh, a lot of people carry high lift jacks, farm jacks as they're called. Uh, a lot of controversy on those. If you're going to carry one, make certain that you know how to use it uh, because a, a farm jack or high lift jack in the hands of an amateur that doesn't have a clue what they're doing, that is a dangerous, even deadly um, a tool. So if you're gonna carry a high lift or farm jack, know how to use it, practice it at home, keep it in good working order, not out exposed to the elements, getting rusted, make sure it stays in good working order or that could cause more, more harm than good. Up next, um, you know, since we're talking about tires and jacks and stuff, a good tire repair kit. These things, um, I, I, mine was, my tire pulled off the bead, so there was no hope in, in salvaging it on the trail. So we just dropped the spare and, and changed it out. But, you know, if I wasn't in that position and it was just a normal, you know, a normal flat, 
um, then a good tire repair kit will get you out most of the time. This is one I uh, actually just picked up, up on Amazon, um, ordered it as soon as I got back because I realized that my tire repair kit, um, I, I do have one, but it's, it's, it's lacking a little bit. So a good tire repair kit is going to come with everything you need. You have a valve stem pullers, a little, little X-Acto knife to trim the, um, the, to trim the plugs, another little cutter there for that. Good sturdy handles so that you can get down into the tire and, and clean them out. The one that I've got just has a little bit of handles. I've used it once and it's actually kind of a pain. So this one has bigger handles that you can, you know, man, get down in that hole and don't go there. Don't, don't go there. Um, in, the, in the tire, in the puncture. Um, it's got a bunch of tire plugs here. It's got uh, even lubricant. Don't go there. Don't, don't go there. Uh, needle nose pliers. Uh, it's got spare valve stems, caps, tools for all that. But the reason why I chose this one is because something we don't think of, if you rip a valve stem off, this has um, extra valve stems that you can use to you know, pop in there and get back on the trail. Because ripping a valve stems, that's a hard fix. Um, so this actually comes with these little spare valve stem thingies. And I got to make sure I know how to use these because uh, I want to, I, I got to try this. But I, I just thought this was a really good kit. It wasn't very expensive. And, uh, you know, I, I just ordered this off Amazon. I actually looked at our auto parts stores, O'Reilly's and Advanced and, and went to Walmart. They didn't have anything like this. So I, I'll put a link to a couple of these things in the description. And, you know, so, so you can find them easily, but a good tire repair kit is, is a must. Up next on the list is a fire extinguisher, at least one, uh, at least one fire extinguisher. I carry two on my rig and each one is, has a different purpose. This is just your standard, normal chemical fire extinguisher. Um, it's designed for most fires. Um, so this is mounted here on the back of my rig so that if we are at camp and, you know, maybe a campfire gets out of control or a rig, um, you know, exhaust or something, heat from the engine catches some grass on fire, you know, all kinds of scenarios. Um, this is easily accessible and that's suitable for, for all those types of fires. On the inside of my Gladiator, right back here on a... Uh, on a on a quick release mount so i can just pull that take this out uh, this is a halgard fire extinguisher and it's designed for engine fires so that will put an engine fire out and not do additional damage to the engine which is usually a a, a concern so this is a special fire extinguisher just for engine fires and right inside here pull this that comes out very easily and it's easy to get to. So make, make sure your fire extinguisher isn't buried, you know, under the back seat, under all your gear. Make sure, you know, for a fire extinguisher, that's easy to get to. And good idea to have multiple, you know, the, the different types of fire extinguishers for different purposes. It's, it's a good, it, it's handy. Hopefully you'll never have to use them. But when you do, you, you want to get to them quickly. Up next is navigation tools. I mean, the whole point of this, you know, overlanding thing is to get out and get to remote places, preferably you know, for, for something without cell signal. So you can be remote, you can be undisturbed, you can be out in the wilderness and not connected and those things. Uh, so some form of navigation so that you know where you are, where you're going, how to get there. And that could be as simple as, you know, old school paper maps and compass. Those are getting hard to come by now, but you know, if you're gonna go that route, at least know how to use it, um, you know, know how to do that map and compass thing. Um, what I recommend, since we all carry smartphones now, um, there are a couple really good navigation apps. Uh, one is, is Onyx. Uh, it's, it's a very simple 
but good navigation app. Uh, the one that I use and the one that I prefer is Gaia GPS. Uh, this thing has so many map options. It has so many tools to be able to, to plan your trip, navigate your trip while you're on the move. Um, both options have the ability to download your maps for offline use because, you know, like, like Google, uh, if you're using, using Google Maps or Apple Maps, that you need data to be able to, to get the maps, um, you know, especially if you just open it up while you're there. Um, these tools, Gaia, Onyx, you download your maps of the area that you're going to so that no matter where you are, you've got your maps. It uses the GPS chip in your phone so it knows where you are. And these things are invaluable. Uh, so uh, I, I've got some tutorials on Gaia GPS. You can just search that on YouTube, search back through my channel. And if you need some help getting started with that, but highly recommend you know, have a good navigation app, learn how to use it for when you're out in remote areas and off the grid. Up next, and this one is very vehicle dependent, um, is some basic spare parts. You know, depending on your rig, the age of your rig, um, you know, what you know about it. I, I know some people that carry everything from extra, you know, axle shafts and drive shafts and, you know, wheel hubs, um, you know, just about everything they can think of that could potentially break on the trail. Those are your, you know, for typically the more hardcore stuff. Um, for me, I carry two things for my Gladiator. One, because I, I broke one before and didn't have a spare on the trail uh, two years ago. And the other, just because it's good, because I had some spares and it's good to have around. Um, but the, the first one is a spare U-joint. Uh, my first time out with the Gladiator in Moab, broke a U-joint on Pritchett Canyon, and as soon as I got home, bought a U-joint. So I, I can, if I happen to break another U-joint, I've got the tools, um, I've got the knowledge, and I've got the spare, uh, I can change the U-joint on the trail, and we can continue on. Didn't have this, was actually missing a key tool to, to pull the axle shaft out. So I busted up my axle shaft continuing on and, and getting out of that trail. We're going back to Pritchett Canyon in March to get redemption and for my wife to wheel her Wrangler and our friends, my Robert's with his new Jeep and it, you don't care. Um, but I'm ready, uh, I'm, I'm ready for that. Uh, another thing I carry is uh, extra brake lines. Uh, brake lines, especially if you're wheeling in, in wooded environments like, you know, like we are here in the Ozarks. Um, I, I've ripped a brake line before uh, out on the trail. If you've got the right tool, you can actually pinch off that, uh, that busted brake line with a set of vice grips and then zip tie that up out of the way and make it out on three brakes. That works. I've done it before. Um, but I've, I, I've just, I, I've got an extra set of brake lines just in case. Um, because that's something that is very realistic that you might experience. Now, like I said, it, you know, for a Toyota, carrying an extra you know, CV axle for the front. My friend Robert does that in his 4Runner because he's busted a lot of CV axles. Uh, that's a very common thing on 4Runners and Tacomas and, you know, IFS rigs. So it just depends on your vehicle. You seriously consider... Um, carrying the most common failure points uh, with you. Uh, you know, don't, don't just bring a whole trailer of spare parts, but you know, be smart about it. You don't want to add a ton of weight, but the most likely culprits you want to be able to, to deal with. But again, that goes back to, do you have the tools? Do you have the knowledge to make that repair on the trail? Because if you don't, having a spare U-joint, not going to help because you don't know what to do with it. So. That's where the experience comes in, you know, all that sort of stuff. But just know your rig and take what you need. Up next, we've got some form of emergency communications. Now, you know, we love our Midland GMRS radios and both Karen and I carry the big 50 watt MXT 575s. But if we're out in a remote location, 
you know, maybe if there's a repeater nearby that we may or may not know about, um, that those don't do any good for emergencies. If you are out in a remote area, um, you need a way to communicate with either first responders, um, back home, whatever. And for that, uh, there's some really good options these days. I've got, we've got two. Um, this is the Garmin inReach. It is a satellite messaging uh, device. And this is the Zolio. It also is a satellite messaging device. These basically do the same thing, but um, their interface is just different. This is the one uh, I carry, and this is the one Kara carries. And between the two, we like the Zolio best. Um, I, I wish I had the Zolio for me, but I don't. I carry the Garmin. Um, these do require a subscription plan. I think they're like 20 bucks a month. And with that, you know, with these, you can text back home. Um, so if I'm out in a remote location and Kara's back here at home, um, I don't have cell signal, I can use my Garmin or, or the Zolio and send text. We can send text messages and communicate back and forth. That's a you know, great way to keep up with family and stuff while you're gone. If there is an emergency, um, maybe catastrophic failure on my rig and there's no one around, or maybe I'm out hiking and you know break a leg or twist an ankle and I can't get back out, um, both of these have um, SOS buttons. And if you click the SOS button, the cavalry is coming. So this sends a signal to whatever nearby, um, I, I don't know if it's law enforcement, uh, first responders, whatever, but they're gonna get this and this gives them your location and help will come. Um, it's for, for safety purposes, um, I, I think you, you gotta have these. And these are nice and small, they come with carabiners on them. So, you know, if you're out hiking, you can clip this on your backpack. Uh, if you're, you know, in your vehicle, they make mounts for, for these to mount in different locations or whatever. Um, these are invaluable. So if you're gonna go out in to remote areas by yourself, even with a group, you know, there's situations where maybe you and a couple friends, um, they're not equipped to get you out and it would take way too long to drive out to get help and come back. So, you know, that's, that's where these come in uh, real handy. The, the main benefit of the Zolio over the, the Garmin inReach is this. If I'm going to communicate with my wife while I'm out, um, I have to initiate the conversation for her to then be able to text me back. We actually had a situation where there was an issue uh, with a family member and she needed to contact me and she couldn't. She just had to wait for me to get to camp, get all set up, and then finally me check in with her and go, hey, I'm here. Then, we, then she was able to tell me. The Zolio, it has its own dedicated number. So as long as this is on, at any point, people back home can initiate the conversation with you. And I think that's a huge huge difference between these two and what makes the Zolio the better option. Next on our list is a first aid kit. Now this is a very basic one. It, uh, it's from UST and it, it, it has the necessities. It's got you know all bandages, it's got tweezers, it's got uh, gloves, it's got some medicines. It's got uh, wipes and prep pads and stuff, and uh, you know, of course, a guide. So uh, I, I, we've been very fortunate, and aside from needing a Band-Aid, we have never needed um, to, to pull out the first aid kits um, on our trips. But I've, I've actually got uh, two of these uh, that live in my Gladiator. This. Is, the other one is just bandages because that's the main thing that we've used. So different kind of bandages going that one. This has some of the other things. But let me show you Kara's. So last year at the Moore Expo, which if, let me, let me plug it. Uh, if you are not familiar with the Moore Expo, it is the Midwest 
Overland Off-Road Expo in Springfield, Missouri, coming up uh, mid-April. And it's, it's a fantastic event. This will be its fourth year, the biggest year. And they, they put on classes. I teach uh, multiple classes there on Gaia GPS and navigation and, and stuff like that. Um, but last year we attended uh, a class by my friend Aaron Paris with Switchback Outdoor Safety. And it was, a, it was a first aid class. And he went into all the details of, it was like a two hour class, it was fantastic. But uh, after that was over, we realized we need to up our first aid game. Uh, so in the back of Kara's Jeep, you see these two, two Molly bags. Uh, these are, you can get these through Switchback. Um, but these are very detailed first aid kits. Um, lots of stuff. I think this one, this one is, um, this, I think this one is the pet, uh, the, the pet one. And I think that one over there is the, the people one. Yeah, so this is the, the, the people one. I mean, this has a tourniquet that we learned how to use. Uh, it has, um, what are these? Really nice um, bandages for to stop bleeding and, and hemorrhaging and that sort of stuff. Uh, forceps, multiple scissors, uh, all kinds of first aid tools along with bandages and everything in there. Um, and so between, between this bag and that bag, we are well equipped on the first aid front to take care of anything that may happen on the trail, both with uh, two-legged and four-legged varieties. And finally, um, you know, something that if you're out overlanding, um, airing up and airing down your tires is very important. Not only does it make your ride better and softer, but it gives you much more traction. So you need tools to be able to, um, you know, air up and down effectively. And sometimes, you know, on, on overlanding trips, you may, you know, be on trail for half the day, then hop on pavement for, you know, I don't know, 50, 60 miles, then hop on uh, trail again. And so you want to be able to air up and down in the middle of the day. So you may be, you know, doing that a couple, you know, a few times a day um, on trips. For airing down, I mean, you can just use your key and you know stick it in the valve stem or, or a screwdriver or something and, and do it that way. I mean, it's old school, but it works. It takes forever, but it works. Um, Kara and I each have completely different systems here. Kara's got a set of these uh, trail deflators. Uh, you've seen them in, in some of our videos, but these are really strong Velcro um, there, but these are um, just, little little things that you screw onto your valve stem and they're preset to a certain psi i think hers are set to 14 or 15 psi so she just walks down the jeep screws those on the valve stems and they just start airing down and they get to that point and they stop so super handy uh, for her i use a four-way deflation system from a company called Speedflate. Um, a company called Morflate makes them as well. A bunch of different companies make them. But it's this uh, set of hoses here. It's got hoses that run to all four tires, one gauge here in the middle, and I can use that to control airing down my tires. Uh, this also serves as how I air up uh, my tires, all four at once. I take this and connect it to my air compressor which lives right there. It's that, uh, it's that green thing in the back. I don't know if it'll focus very well, um, but it's, it's that right there. It is a, a Morflate 10 6 twin air compressor. Um, I am crazy impressed with this thing. It does incredibly well. It is super fast. It's only 260 bucks, 250 bucks or something for a twin air compressor. Uh, that lives in the back of my Gladiator, so it has endured the elements for a while now. Highly recommend. Um, I mean, you can go super cheap and just get, uh, you know, a little 12 volt air compressor from you know, Walmart. That, that works. Takes forever, but it works. In Kara's Jeep, you cannot see it very well, um, but she, underneath her seat, there it is, she has the mighty ARB Twin air compressor. That is some high-end uh, 
air output and it is paired with the Epic Kraken inflation system. So she's got hoses that run to all four tires and she airs up all four tires at once as well. And it, it does incredibly well. So both of ours are four tire inflations. They're pretty much equally as fast. I need to test that one day, but they're pretty much on par. Uh, but the, a twin air compressor, it's, I mean, it's the way to go. If you, need, if you need to go budget, get the Morflate. If you want to go high end, get the ARB. Uh, but like I said, you know, you just want to you know, get a 12 volt air compressor from Walmart because maybe you're only running, you know, 30 inch tires. That'll do. That's, that's no problem. But when you start running, you know, 35s, 30, you know, 38s, you're going to be there all day. So... Yeah. Well, I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, be sure and put them in the comments. Let me know if you think we left something out. Um, this was just, you know, kind of my top 10 list. So let me know if you think I left something out and give the video a like, subscribe. If you're not, please uh, check out our Patreon link in the description. If you want to consider supporting the channel, gain access to special content, uh, events, and all of our GPS data. And for Ozark Overland Adventures merchandise, go to shopoverlandapparel.com. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.